Since Harvard was founded in 1636, there has always been the presence of a mercantile to meet the needs of the university village. From very humble beginnings nearly 400 years ago, over the centuries, Harvard Square has grown to be what it is today. Roughly 44 acres, nearly 1 million square feet of retail, restaurant, entertainment, professional services, and nonprofit organizations that meet the needs of our local community and global visitors. Our district played a major role in the American Revolution. It carried on during the War of 1812, the Civil War, the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, and two world wars. The folk music era was propelled within the walls of 47 Mount Auburn Street that evolved to our beloved Passim. The Vietnam conflict was protested here with sit-ins on the common and the taking over of offices at the university. The square was not immune to the depression, the dot-com bubble collapse, or the 2008 Great Recession. Our shopkeepers and restaurateurs, entertainment venues and service professionals survived it all with grit and steadfast pride. While Harvard University and First Parish in Cambridge, a Unitarian Universalist church located in the heart of the square, harken back to 1636, there are many businesses that are over a century old and some nearly two centuries old, like the Cambridge Savings Bank, which was founded in 1834. Others came a bit later, the Harvard Coop in 1882 and Levitt and Pierce in 1883, Many businesses established at the turn of the 20th century are still thriving, such as Felix Shoe Repair, which was founded in 1913, Rattle Square Florist in 1917, Dixon Brothers Hardware in 1920, Grolier Poetry Bookstore in 1927, and the Harvard Bookstore in 1932. Swiss Watchmaker opened its doors in 1940, and Hillside Cleaners in 1946. We hold these, and many more, establishments dear. They, along with their neighboring businesses, represent stability, service, and an unwavering commitment to our community. Those qualities, personified by owners, managers, and staff, are significant attributes we use to help define the character of the square. While our meandering streets, brick sidewalks, unique stores, historic parks, charming public plazas, and four centuries of architecturally engaging buildings are cherished, it is our people, the shopkeepers, restaurateurs, students, professors, workers of all types, street performers, chess players, neighbors both housed and unhoused, and visitors from across the globe who give it life and give it meaning. So my friends, when this crisis is over, the square will do what it has always done. Shopkeepers will open their doors, restaurants will serve delicious food, live music will be performed and heard. People will take pleasure in movies and theater, museums and galleries. Folks will have their hair cut, nails polished, and shoes repaired. They will make copies, purchase hardware and greeting cards. We will once again enjoy the simple pleasures of life. Browsing bookstores, dining al fresco, grabbing a coffee or a slice on the run eating an ice cream cone, gelato, or frozen yogurt while strolling through the square on a warm summer night. Harvard Square will emerge with determination and goodwill, intelligence and grace, its spirit unbroken, and its character intact. <laughs>